we're Ben and Rebecca with His and Hers Alaska and today we're going to show you how we make boondocking coffee. You might wonder what's special about our boondocking coffee. Really, it's not about the coffee, it's how we make it and it's without electricity. So historically, we've used the built-in coffee pot that we have here in the RV, but we don't have an inverter, so we have to turn our generator on to make coffee with the coffee pot. So we looked for alternatives and found this to be the best way to make coffee. So first of all, I'm going to start by showing you the supplies that you need to make boondocking coffee. Honestly, the key is to having this little pour-over device. It's ceramic. And so it is breakable, you need to put it in a safe place when you're traveling. You also need a teapot to heat up your water. We use number four coffee filters. It technically takes number two, but they're harder to find, and so we buy fours, they work just fine. We have learned over the years, don't skimp on the cheap generic ones, just buy the brand name, because otherwise they break. Not a pleasant way to start your morning off when you're making coffee. You do need ground coffee and a cup to put it in. I'm the primary coffee drinker in the house, so we're only making on a day-to-day -day basis one cup of coffee. So the trick is, so you don't have to worry about overfilling this when you're pouring it in, pour your fresh water in. So now all you do, light your burner, boil some hot water, and wait. While we're waiting, I'm going to get the cone-shaped coffee filter, put it right in there, and we grind our own beans. And I know, just for the sake of uh, using this, that I like to be just a little bit under full on this scoop. Dump it in. Now you're waiting for the water to boil. So you're going to need to dial a couple things in. Water goes through these filters fairly quick. It's not a very slow steep. So I find that since we grind our own beans, I like to grind them up a little bit finer so my coffee ends up being a little stronger. Whereas the fine grind for this would probably to be too fine of a grind for a regular coffee maker. And you also need to dial in how much you want to pour into your little cone filter. I just go on autopilot so I know how much coffee grounds I need to put in there. So figure it out for yourself how fine of a coffee ground you need, and how much you need to put in to make your perfect cup of coffee. So make sure you pour your coffee in nice and slow, and I usually just fill it up about halfway and let it sit. That should be the rest of it. Now if you like uh, creamer in your coffee, make sure you leave room for uh, adding creamer. Remember how I measured out the amount of water in this cup? So I know with confidence, if that was the only water in my teapot, I can dump it all in and not have to worry about overfilling this. You might think that this takes a long time, but honestly, if you factor in how long it takes you to clean your French press or your coffee pot after you're done making it, this really is a time efficient way. Okay, the coffee's all done. So all I have to do for cleanup is take this, rinse this out in the sink, and throw this in the trash. So here's the finished product. We are a big fan of Contigo mugs because I like to work on my coffee over a three hour time period. All done, you're ready to go. Hopefully the next time you go camping, you'll have an easier time making a cup of coffee without your generator. All of the things that we use to make coffee today, you can find on amazon.com. Thanks for watching. Be sure to give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel to follow our adventures, share with your friends, and most importantly, enjoy the ride.